ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. So now we got to talk about the Dominican Republic, child. This is a mess. Talking about colorism. We got to hit on what's going on with the Dominican Republic. I don't know if y'all are aware of this. But if you are dark skinned, they don't care if you Haitian, African American, uh, Nigerian, from somewhere in the Caribbean. The U.S. Uh, State Department has issued a warning for dark skinned people. Okay? Dark skinned people such as myself and others. They are saying that all y'all dark folks better stay y'all asses out the Dominican Republic. It's gotten so bad right now. Not only are they trying to get, um, trying to forcibly remove the Haitians there, legal or illegal. They want all the dark skinned Haitians to leave. So if you happen to be dark skinned, now you might not be Haitian. You don't even speak, you know, what is that? What did we say? Sake passe. You don't speak Creole. You're just minding your American business. If you are dark skinned, you are at risk of being deported, hurt, maimed. There have been reports that they are even killing dark skinned people in the Dominican Republic. Let me go ahead and show y'all this if y'all think I'm lying. So when I tell you that colorism is very real, it is very, very fucking real. This is what is currently going on for all y'all who don't know, for all y'all who want to run down and you know, go grab an exotical, dark skin black men, be careful, because you might end up, you know what I'm saying, a lost cause in the Dominican Republic. So the U.S. state is warning. It's dark skin citizens of the Dominican Republic migrant crackdown. So Haitian migrants are being deported from the Caribbean country. Authority says they are targeting people based on their appearance. Okay. So anybody, U.S. officials in the Dominican Republic are warning dark-skinned Americans, they are at risk of being swept up in the country's crackdown on Haitian migrants. The advice from the U.S. Embassy in Santo Domingo suggests that authorities there are using a person's appearance as criteria for detention of those suspected of being in the country illegally. Okay, this is real, y'all. There have been dark skinned people in the Dominican Republic reporting being beaten, people being killed because they're assuming that they are Haitian. And the thing that's sad is Haitian people can be of any complexion. My, shout out to my girl, Sweet Ma. Sweet Ma, okay, she is full Haitian. She will speak Creole at the drop of a dime. And Sweet Ma is super light skinned and she is full blooded Haitian. Shout out Kareen Alodo. I, I don't know if I mispronounced your last name, but I love her. She's on YouTube. Beautiful girl. She's Haitian. Kareen, you know what I'm saying? She's lighter skin. You know, she's like brown skin, you know? So anybody who's Haitian is not like super dark. So for them to just be targeting dark skinned people and saying, if you're dark, you're Haitian, get out. And shout out, I see my Haitian flag. Shout out to all my Zoes in the chat. Shout out to y'all. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I'm, and I'm not trying to make this a Dominican versus, you know, Haitian thing, right? I have Dominicans, Dominicanos who support me. And shout out to y'all, but y'all's country. Y'all not on, have to drag y'all's country a few times. Y'all's country do be on some colorist stuff. Like, let's keep this real. now. This is what's really bothering me with this, right? Because like I always say, if you don't understand history, you're destined to repeat this. And what is very eerie and very scary about this, Dominicans, um, your country is repeating some very scary things, okay? Now, we all know my Spanish ain't the best, okay? But I've talked about this in the past. And... I feel like this is, once again, what they're trying to do. 
Mais horror, la rasa. Ok? Mi hora la raza. Again, my Spanish is not the best, but all my Latinos, everybody in Latin America, y'all know what I'm trying to say. Okay? It means the advancement of the race. You never go darker. You always go lighter. That's why a lot of times, too, like in Latin countries, you'll see like the dark, dark skinned grandparents and then the lighter parents and then the grandkids are even lighter. They're trying to wash out that that black and did i do good on my pronunciation thank y'all for writing it yes it's a real thing mejora la raza right advancement of the race and i believe that this is what is going on or improvement of the race right um improving it by making the race lighter now like i said if you guys are not going to face this head on you guys are destined to repeat the past. Let's not forget this colorist who literally slaughtered thousands of Haitian people, Rafael Trujillo, okay? Remember, there's a such thing as the Parsley Massacre. A lot of people don't know about the, pa the Parsley Massacre. Um, it happened between the years. Let me see if I have the years written down. I believe it was like the 1930s, like 1936 was the, Parsley, was the Parsley Massacre. And over 280,000 Haitians were killed. Okay. They were killed. And this was the president at the time, Rafael Trujillo. This is him. Very light-skinned man. He didn't want any, any darkies darkening the Dominican Republic. So what he did, because at that point, because if you look at the Dominican Republic and Haiti, they're all on, they're on this big island called the island of Hispaniola. It's all one island, right? But the Dominican side is more flourishing, you know, because the Haitian side, um, I think they've like over, what is that? They've, they've over cultivated the land. So a lot of stuff doesn't really grow. Um, it's a lot more struggle on that side on the island of Hispaniola. And so he wanted to keep the Haitians on that side. He did not want them freely coming to the Dominican side. And so Trujillo went on to kill a lot of Haitian people. Now, what some of my Haitian friends have told me, even though he's light, bright, damn near white, come to find out, they said his great grandmother was a dark skinned Haitian woman. So the self hate is real. This man has Haitian blood in him, but because he was lighter skinned, he was able to pass, you know, and just be full Dominican or whatever. But he has Haitian blood in him. He has a dark skin, you know what I'm saying, grandmother. So um, it's sad. And that's why when I was talking about colorism, like, a, I don't know, a few years back, and I was talking about it, like, you know, how colorism affects, you know, globally, right? different cultures from Africa to the Caribbeans, Asia, things like that. And I was saying the thing, wait, how do you pronounce it? Somebody wrote Spanish. Trujillo? Oh, Trujillo. Thank you for breaking that down. Um, Suk Wan Kun Trujillo. Okay. So Rafael Trujillo. Okay. Thank you. Um, like I said, I be trying, child. My Spanish is not that good. My kids' Spanish is better than mine. But, um, I was saying, it was like a bleaching topic. And I was saying like, don't be so hard on people who bleach their skin, especially in certain countries, because you have to understand that for some people, when they bleach their skin, they're literally bleaching their skin to better their life, like to better their circumstance because Colorism is so damn blatant and messed up. Even like if you think it's bad here, go to certain countries. There was, I remember a few years back, they were saying, and I don't know if it's like that now, but in certain banks in Jamaica, you could not work at the front desk if you were not light skinned. You'd either be in the back or you wouldn't get a job. So that's why I try as I've gotten older not to judge people as much who feel like they have to go that route 
just for basic economics, just to be able to get a job. Because the second you go and you show up for the job interview, it's automatically too dark, too dark. And they'll tell you that. Even places like go to China. They want to talk about Chinese hate. Be black in China and go try and apply for certain jobs. They'll tell you in the Chinese wanted ad, we want white. We want blonde hair, blue eyes. They have full descriptions of what they are looking for. Is this a job for an acting gig? No. To be a teacher, banker, fry cook. And they're literally putting the race in the description. And it's like a really dirty secret that a lot of people don't want to talk about or acknowledge. But colorism plays a part in a lot of stuff. From the entertainment industry to even just getting regular jobs out here. That if you are lighter and you're more palatable, you do have a better chance at certain things in life. It, it's just fact. It's not, it's unfortunate, but it is fact that you have to work 10 times as hard as a darker skinned person to show somebody your value and your worth. And it's sad. There's certain things that lighter, lighter skin girls can get away with and it's seen as cute and spicy. Look at Krishan. I talked about this a few streams ago. I like Krishan. I think she's a sweet girl. I got a chance to meet her, but her antics are bullshit. She's doing too much, but people find it cute because of how she looks. If Krishan was a dark skinned girl running around here doing half the shit that she's doing, she'd been canceled a long time ago. Blueface wouldn't even look at her twice. Let's keep that real. He's already been called out for being colorist. So, you know, colorism is very, very real. You know what I'm saying? And so it's really sad that these Haitians that are in the Dominican Republic, legal and illegal, are just being treated like trash. And it's been going on for a while. But it's obviously, it's gotten pretty bad if the State Department is now telling all dark-skinned people uh, yeah, y'all might not want to go to the Dominican Republic. So imagine, so what's next? Are they going to get rid of dark-skinned Dominicans? Because let's not act like everybody in the Dominican Republic is light-skinned. I don't mean Dominicans darker than me. You be like, damn, you Dominican? Because when you see them, they just look like a dark-skinned black person, but then they start speaking Spanish. It's like, oh, yeah, you Dominican. Amara La Negra, you know what I'm saying? And, and many people. So, so what are they going to do next? Are they then going to just say, even if you're a dark-skinned Dominican, you speak Spanish and, you, you know, you, you were raised here, you're too dark to be in the country. Because from what they're saying, they're just removing dark-skinned people. So I'm assuming eventually that's going to go towards dark-skinned Dominicanos. This is sad. I'm going to play you guys this video really quick. I know I've been on for like an hour and 40 minutes, child. Let me play y'all this video of just some of the things that's going on, going on with the Haitians. There was one that was really sad. They like this lady, man, having a baby. They wouldn't even let her come to the hospital because she was dark skinned and Haitian. She had to have the baby on the side of the road. Okay, let me pull this up here. Okay, here we go. It's become an all too common scene. Haitian refugees detained in the Dominican Republic. We met them in this military base in the Havon, right at the border. They're being sent back to Haiti, even those who say they've built new lives here. My husband works in a construction site and I was cooking at home when the police arrived. They wouldn't let me get my baby's clothes. I left all my money at home and I have nothing here. Security forces here are telling us that most of these people were detained trying to enter the country. Yeah. But some of these women are telling me that they have homes here and that their children were born in the Dominican Republic. Mirlanda Pierre is with her eight-year-old son. She shows us his birth certificate that proves he was born in the Dominican Republic. My son has a birth certificate. He was born here. They cannot send him back to Haiti. The UN has called on the Dominican Republic to hold deportations. Haiti is in the midst of a political crisis that has gangs controlling large parts of the country. Thousands are fleeing. 
Lack of available healthcare services in Haiti have forced pregnant women to cross the border to deliver their children. But many are not allowed inside Dominican hospitals, and some have had their children on the street. Human rights activists say they're alarmed about what they call our President Luis Abinader's persecution of Haitians in his country. There are massive deportations, and the cases are not individual. There's no due process. There's children with papers, others with just visas. It's just massive and a scandal. Even pregnant women being sent back to Haiti, and the law says that shouldn't be done. The Dominican Republic is building a wall to protect its borders from smugglers, but also illegal migrants. Rubén Silia says his country is poor and cannot allow everyone in. The only mechanism the Dominican Republic has is to show that it will not tolerate migrant irregularity or the deportations, and this is what we are doing. This has nothing to do with ethnical reasons or racism. That's another problem. If the state stops all deportations, we do not know what could happen here. Haiti is facing its worst crisis in years. Human rights groups say its people are being discriminated against across the region. And they're asking the Dominican Republic, among other governments, for empathy for those who are trying to escape hunger, violence, and have no place to go. Do you know where you're taking me? Teresa Bo, Al Jazeera, the Jabon on the Haitian border. Woo we. So as you see, it is real. And Again, the only thing they're going off of is people's phenotypes. They're not going off of like their paperwork and any of that stuff. It's, you know, if you look Haitian, you got to go. Like the lady was saying, her son was born in the Dominican Republic. So technically, you know, he's a Dominican citizen, but they're like, nope, you look Haitian, you're from a Haitian background, you got to go. So again, this is just a warning to all y'all going to the Dominican Republic and doing, you know, y'all sex tourism and all that nefarious shit y'all be out there doing and bragging about on Twitter. Um, yeah, you might get caught up in this suite. So it's it's that real down there right now. Um, I think it's it's sad. And am I saying like this is the whole country or everybody in the Dominican? No, of course not. But I'm just showing you guys, this is, you know, I'm not making this up. This came from the State Department. You can do your own research. But I mean, I'm not saying this to like disparage everybody in the Dominican Republic. Of course, everybody in the Dominican Republic is not racist or colorist, but that is ingrained in the culture. And people need to stop acting like it's not. It's very much ingrained in the culture, you know? So it, it's just kind of sad. I think for me, people really need to look at what is going on and really ask themselves, is the past coming back to haunt the present? Because when I'm seeing stuff like this, it reminds me of like what happened when they had that president, Raphael, in place, and he slaughtered all these people. And you don't want history to repeat itself in that way. So... Yeah, I think the whole situation is sad. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.